I'm going to show you the wiring diagram that I found that it seems the most accurate for this motor. I've been, uh, all those wires seem to correspond up uh, to the harness with what they're supposed to do. Um, let's take a, just a quick tour of the electrical. So I showed you in the last video the, the power in for the starter is here, but this wire right here, which comes in here and goes through this big red plug, that is that bundle of wires that goes up under the dash and you can see a bunch of them through here. Um, I think we covered this one already, yellow and orange, which goes, you can see it comes down to here. I had to replace this because it was all frayed, but it goes down into one end of the um, starter solenoid and there's a ground then that just goes over to the block here on the other side of that starter solenoid. Um, remember power positive cable is coming in here and so this red one comes off of that so this is then 12 volts coming you know through through the battery from the battery then it's going to go out through here and then it goes through a fuse right here which um, now I recall uh, I blew earlier because I was doing the wrong I was plugging things into the wrong thing on the key. Working. All right, well, let's turn it over. Ready? <laughs> Nothing. So I'm going to open this up and take a look at that fuse. And here's that tiny little fuse. And I don't happen to have anything like that right now, so. Um, this is probably something you shouldn't do at home, but I'm going to just for now wrap a little bit of tin foil around both sides. Um, sometimes you might have to do this just to get yourself home. It's probably pretty easy to blow this fuse. Um, you obviously don't want to leave it like that forever. Somewhere along the line I blew a fuse, and so I'm trying to figure out, make, sh make sure that I've got all the things connected to this switch that I got at the X-Man. Now, um, you know, there's a big red separate connector here so obviously you can assume that is going to be your positive 12 volts and a big black one here and you can assume that's going to be your ground uh, but you should probably check them and if you use a multimeter like this and set it to uh, continuity so that this one doesn't beep or anything which is a preferable method but um, you can see it just changes the display from well, here it says one, you know, it, so when you touch them together, it, 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 it changes the display. And what I found was that the red, if you touch it to the metal body, which you know is going to be grounded, it shows that this big red line is actually Interesting. So when the key is off, it is connected to ground. When the key is turned on, it's not connected to ground. So what that seems to be telling me is that that is the sort of kill switch for the motor. So it's sending ground, which will get to the uh, coil. Uh, or cylinder the coil and short it out and turn the motor off so that's not your, your crown so much I don't, let's see okay so the brown there's a brown here and that one if I touch it to the body seems to always ground out so that I've is spent the last hour or so um, trying to figure out what all the wires do here with my multimeter and getting it kind of made it up to this wiring harness. It's just kind of all taped together right now. I need to get some terminal blocks and you know make it more permanent. This is sort of proof of concept right now. So um, after about an hour of, of carefully doing all this, I think I finally got it together. And um, but I had just pulled this off and found that stamped on the back of each terminal is 
some clue as to what each one does. B for battery, S for starter, L for load. So <laughs> probably should have checked that first. But um, I guess I'm at a point where I'm ready to try it and see if I can uh, get it to do what it's supposed to do. Okay. Take two. So now let's see if we can get the choke to go. Choke's working. And turn the starter. Here we go. All right, got it turning over. I don't have any gas hooked up to it, and I frankly don't know that it's making spark. Um, that's going to be the next thing. Now that we got it turned over, we've got the electrical hooked up. Now it's time to uh, check to see if we have spark. So, checking for spark. Uh, obviously, these are the spark plugs here. Again, not best to be out over a lake when you do this, but sometimes what choice do you have? This is a typical spark plug wrench that might come with with the motor and I'm gonna pull these out and I'll show you why they're not in there very tight with the spark plugs out you don't have the compression so you'll be able to turn the motor around real easily um, I guess they all go clockwise so what we have to do to check to see if there's spark is you're going to put, let's just do them one at a time, put a spark plug in here and then you can hold it probably without getting shocked I think. Make sure the end is touching uh, something metal so it's grounded and then you're going to turn this to see if it generates a spark. Yeah, I don't see anything, but uh, I think you got to turn the key on. Yeah, you'll have to turn the key on first. I'm not seeing this. Why am I not seeing this? All right. So let me check the other one. no spark there okay uh, you know what I think it might be is that I don't have the kill switch plugged in on let me check some things I'll get back to you so no spark right now all right well I found I had wired something wrong in the uh, key switch so that um, it was sending ground it was grounding out the kill switch uh, all the time. Um, it should only ground out the kill switch when the key is in the total off position. So I rewired it and I was, t <laughs> I was testing it again. I couldn't really see a spark but I did get a great shock while I was turning it. So <laughs> I know that there's spark here now. Um, you know, no spark, there's always so many reasons. It could be the spark plug, you know, start with a new spark plug is a good idea. Could be the spark plug wire. Um, but a good place to check is there's a kill switch or a ground that goes it goes in there and I I'm certain it's this black wire here and here and I believe and I might be wrong but if you disconnect this ground wire from where it goes in here let's see um, I think that would be a good way to check because I think if you get sparked then you know that you're getting ground somewhere along that line. It could be the kill switch, it could be you know, any a, a wire that's uh, rubbed bare. Uh, so I think I have spark. So um, I'm going to put those spark plugs back in and we're going to end this video. Uh, i got to go charge my battery up. And uh, we'll take, uh, we'll pick up next with fuel.